G'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, uh, I've got the afternoon off, so um, I've decided to, to jump into the shack and, and continue playing around with this particular amplifier here. Now, what I've decided to do, um, I've sort of decided to have a look at um, the characteristic curves for the uh, the 2N3904. And as you can see here, um, the, the curves themselves, you have a, um, a load line here, which through the, the y-axis over here, or the x-axis more the point, um, is uh, cut off, so you, you, for the voltage, the VCE then becomes our VCC, in my particular case, uh, 12 volts. Then on the collector current side, when it's uh, running in full saturation, is, is the maximum out current. So I've got two points here, I've got one which is 10 milliamps and one which is 5 milliamps. Um, as you can see, the higher current you get, the longer that line is, so the greater dynamic range you get. Um, however, you've got more current, and, and conversely, you could go further out here on the VC as well, uh, or VCC to get the same uh, the same thing. So what I've decided to do, um, I'm going to set my, to try and get the best of everything, I don't want to be way down here at 1 milliamps, I've decided to go up to 5 milliamps um, to try and maximise uh, my dynamic range within the load line there, um, without sacrificing uh, battery consumption. So. What I've done here, and let's see if I can zoom up without keeping in with keeping in focus. I think that's pretty well in focus there, which is good. Okay, so what I've done with the uh, the amp, I, I wasn't overly happy with the way it was performing with the the transformer on the output there on the collector was transforming uh, the 50 ohms for the load up to 200 ohms for the collector. Um, it just wasn't performing very well. So what I elected to do just for experimenting is I've taken that out of the circuit. And I've now got on there an FT37-43 with 10 turns. So that is effectively, in fact it is, it's a, it's a radio frequency choke, an RFC. So that's now blocking all the RF and going up into the VCC line. Uh, and it's forcing it all the way through that uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor and across my load. The load at the moment is just a little variable trim pot there. It's a 102, so a 1K uh, trim pot. And the only other change I've made here for experimenting uh, is another... Uh, 1k trim pot here in the RE in the emitter leg. Now that 1k is in parallel with a 330 ohm resistor, which gives me an overall variation of roughly uh, 246, 247 odd ohms. The desired RE for 5 milliamps turned out to be 240 ohms. So that's why I dumped that 330 across it. So I got the variation across what I wanted. And when I say the variation, you can see there on the wiper arm. Uh, that's the 100 nanofarad capacitor, which is shunting a, a portion of that resistance from an RF point of view to Earth, uh, which is effectively then uh, changing my uh, gain. So there's actually two things I'm changing here for the overall performance of um, the amplifier in terms of the voltage gain. I'm varying the um, load, and I'm also varying from an, from an RF point of view the emitter resistor. And as we know, for a common emitter uh, amplifier, the voltage gain is um, our RL over our emitter resistor. Anyway, so if I just sort of zoom back out of here and go up onto the scope, I'm getting much better. Oh, in fact, sorry, what I will, will say, sorry, um, I don't have a, any kind of script on this. I'm just sort of talking out loud here. Um, what the intent is, once I've got a, um, and I'll do in the second half of this video, once I've got a configuration that I like, um, I'm then going to um, go back to having a transformer to transform um, 50 ohms, which is the actual real load, which is the TUF3 mixer, uh, transform that back up to whatever this turns out to be. In other words, whatever the amplifier likes to see, or the transistor likes to see in its collector leg. So that's, that's, that's my logic there. Um, work out what it needs to be and then do a transformer to match, like I say, 50 ohms back up to whatever that is. So just coming back out again. So up on the scope we've got uh, two signals there. So the left hand, more, more, more the point, the yellow uh, signal there is the output uh, across that variable trim pot. Um, and the purple one there is the input. So the scales are the same. And at the moment we're getting um, a voltage gain of four. So I've actually on purpose, and if I was now just to very slightly tweak um, the emitter, the emitter uh, trim pot, so that 
bypass capacitor we can see there the gain increasing now I've got a, a one volt I think it's in picture there uh, one volt peak to peak on the input so I think that's quite high for uh, voltage coming in off the antenna um, and I just can't quite remember where I've read it but I've uh, we're talking you know ranges of uh, microvolts up to uh, you know a volt or so for really strong uh, close by signals so my thinking is if I set this to have nice good linearity for one volt when I do decrease it which I'll do now so now down to uh, 500 millivolts you know 100 uh, will maintain that linearity so it, now that of course that's now 1.3 volts which uh, is beyond my uh, design goal of one volt so that's one volt there so my thinking there is if I can adjust that to to keep the things nice and linear and then if I was now just to adjust that load um, that load trim pot you can see a similar thing we can adjust that and of course because the voltage gain is proportional to the load on the collector we can see that increasing so I increase the load increase the volts so my thinking is again coming back here uh, I've got one volt peak to peak on the input over here um, I've got the scope here on math so it's giving me on the purple one volt peak to peak and I've set I'm setting the output to be four volts so one volt so it's one volt per or one volt per division so one two three four divisions um, rather than sort of just cheating off the maths down here so that's now a, a voltage gain of four which is around what I wanted to have in the first place so what I'm going to do now I'm going to pause here and I'm going to uh, make up a little transformer and I'm going to replace this output circuit here to transform 50 ohms back up to whatever this is here so I'll disconnect this I'll now measure it and like I say wind a transformer and we'll see how things go back soon okay so um, that is now in circuit so it turned out to be uh, 580 ohms was that little um, that little trim pot there so now uh, the square root of 580 divided by 50 um, turns out to be uh, three or we'll say again uh, 3.4 so I've used a turns ratio of 4 to 14 uh, so 14 turns on the side that's uh, in the collector so that's going to be presenting hopefully somewhere in the region of 580, 580 ohms to the collector and then on the uh, the secondary side here one two three four uh, four turns on the 50 ohm side uh, interesting enough uh, it's not ideal unfortunately but that's all part of experimenting um, again same scale over here one bolt per division uh, and if you just were just go straight down here we can see that our input here is sitting on one volt peak to peak which aligns with the sig gen uh, and then the output is 1.5 um, I can reduce that sig gen down now that's sort of getting outside the range of the, uh, the trigger um, so that's half a volt that's now up to uh, 1 volt and of course we go much beyond that it's 1.3, 1.4, 1 1.1 so back down to 1 volt again so you know an amplification factor of what, 0 0.5 so um, that's certainly not 4 like it was before so what I think I might do here now just for the sake of doing it I'm going to um, go back down here I'm going to, oops, falling off the side of the table um, I will disconnect that transformer um, I'll put the, the, the RFC back in again and just for interest sake I'll just dump that um, straight across through that, de, that decoupling capacitor, the DC blocking capacitor there um, and just put it straight into the 50 ohm load and see what that looks like um, shouldn't be very good because 50 ohms now in the collector as opposed to 580 I suspect that voltage gain is going to go down considerably um, but we'll just have a bit of a play around with that and see how it looks ok so the RFC is now, uh, now back in circuit, uh, coming off the collector then is a 100 nanofarad capacitor going straight into the uh, 50 ohm resistor there. Um, and absolutely no surprises at all, the uh, voltage gain has, has certainly dropped uh, right off there, in fact um, we're doing a very good job of being an attenuator. So anyway, so but what I will do while I'm here, I was also a bit of a, uh, a play with that um, collector, ah, I see we're just that's one volt peak to peak it doesn't surprise me at all so let's go back to one volt that's one volt coming in 
Let's just go up a division. Uh, and yeah, no, so there's absolutely no way with that very, very low uh, collector load that I can get um, anywhere near linear, um, linear before she starts to uh, distort. So that's interesting. So I might go back and have another play around with that transformer and see if I can't uh, give a better load, um, better load back into the collector. All fun and games, that's what they say. Okay, she looks a bit ugly, but um, it's working okay. So at the moment there, I've got a, uh, I've done a bit of a playing around with a few values. Initially, uh, that trim pot came out to be 580 ohms. But through a bit of trial and error and a bit of experimenting, I've got a, a transformer here. The secondary, I don't want to go less than four turns. Um, because it's 7 megahertz, I want to maintain that inductive reactance to be that sort of four to five times the 50 ohms, so I don't want to go less than four. So therefore, the variable that I can play around with then with regards to the turns ratio is, is the orange side, or let's say the primary side, moving in that direction. At the moment, what we have there is a 25 turn to four turn transformer. Um, and if I was just to zoom out and go back up onto the scope, We can see there that uh, yep, same voltage we're getting there, just under one volt, so 960 millivolts, which ties up with the SIGGEN, um, and we're getting an output of, of three volts. So essentially a voltage gain of three. Um, if I go, that's now 1.1 volts, so we're just starting to get a bit distorted there, but certainly anything, anything less than that as expected uh, is looking good. Interesting enough, if I, was, if I was to select, say, 500 millivolts as the input, and now that I adjust that emitter bypass capacitor, then I can get considerably more gain there. So I can go well beyond, um, see, that's half a volt there for 2.6 volts on the output. So, let's see, a bit dicky there. But again, now if I was to increase back up to 1 volts, so that's 700 millivolts. We're straight away into distortion there. So I'm in sort of two minds. Do I do I set it up for say 500 millivolts, half a volt, to get say a voltage gain of four, or should I, you know, um, which I probably will do, uh, set it up for one volt, which is there, and then decrease that down to it's just starting to get sort of linear about there, uh, and except we're getting there essentially one volt in and three volts out so a voltage gain of three uh, and then anything less than that will be uh, the same ratio uh, but certainly not distorted in any way so maybe that's what I'll do now maybe I'll just sort of uh, clean this up uh, and make it look nice and tidy and put it in and, and I guess the beauty of what I'd like to do is building on these little um, circuit boards here is it makes it nice and easy just to pull them apart and, and to redo it just untack the two ends and and place replace the board. So that's where we're at. So I'll um I'll just about if I'm gonna leave that variable resistor in there or I'll measure it and then work out a um, um the closest actual resistance which I'll probably do there just to just to tidy that up, make it a little bit smaller. We'll see how we go there. Tidy that up. Um, I'll leave that at four turns to twenty five turns to match that fifty ohm load to, to get the um the voltage gain and we'll leave it at that. So um, don't have too many explanations why um, some of those initial transformers weren't delivering that 50 ohms back up to the 580 ohms um, that that was delivering. Um, I'd have to put some thought into that why that may be the case but either way this seems to be working okay, seems to be uh, nice and linear across that voltage range there. So I'll leave it at that and um, see how we go. Cheers all.